All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's latest movie he has done. Now, what do I know about this movie? I only know one thing about this movie. That one very specific meme where it's Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at something. He's like, he just recognized something. That's the only thing I really know about this movie. I, I have no idea what the context on that is. So I'm excited to see. But besides that, I know nothing. And the only thing I'm expecting is just a Quentin Tarantino movie. So I'm expecting a good time. Also, we got a really good cast for this. We got Leo. We got Brad Pitt. Margaret Robbie. So anyways, I'm gonna stop wasting time. We're just gonna hop right into this movie. If you'd like to watch the full length reaction, that'll be available on Patreon as well as early access to the next Quentin Tarantino movie. I'm kind of thinking about stopping the Quentin Tarantino movies here just because I'm not sure if anyone wants me to continue the rest of them technically we have a couple left they're not that popular and i'm not sure if anyone would be interested in that so if you are please let me know down below but anyways let's get started amateurs try and take men in alive amateurs usually don't make it mm, like the hangman kurt russell you are to my right is bounty law series lead and jake k hill himself rick dalton left is rick stunt double cliff booth leo and brad so okay Rides his stunt double, okay. Say Jake Cahill gets uh, shot off his horse. Now, can I fall off a horse? No. Yes, I can. Wait, but if you get hurt, production has to pause. Fall off wrong and I, and I sprain my wrist or a... Or a mm. That can put an undue burden on production because now maybe I can't work for a week. Cliff here is meant to help carry the load. They kind of do, they do kind of look alike, to be honest. Like enough to where I guess Brad Pitt could technically be his stunt double. It's kind of funny. All right, so this takes place in 1969. Okay, I was wondering what the year was. Sorry about that. It's my pleasure, Mr. Schwartz. Call me my, uh, my, yeah. my car's in the shop, so he gave me a ride. That's a big fucking lie. <laughs> Rick got his driver's license taken away for too many drunk driving tickets. Cliff drives him everywhere. Damn. Damn. But is that Kurt Russell in that rating? Pretty sure it is. A lot of killing. A lot of killing. Now, gentlemen, the plan is we will... Some glorious bastards throwback. Anybody order fried sauerkraut? Ooh. Oh, now it's really an Inglorious Bastards throwback. Are you nasty bastard? <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I was shit scared of the damn thing, to be yeah. honest. Kristen, the Nazi's there! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's too high. Anything we can do about that heat? Rick, it's a flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> and I watched two episodes of Bounty Law. I know, six. That's, um... <laughs> Wanted. Fuck, I don't know his name in real life. Uh, I looked it up the other day, but it's Bud from Kill Bill. And you brought him here to collect. He's always doing cowboy shit. He had a cowboy hat in Kill Bill. He played the cowboy in Hateful Eight. He was Mr. Blonde in Reservoir Dogs, and he had, he had like nothing to do with cowboys and that. But like, I'm surprised he wasn't in Django and Chain. Unless I, unless he was, I completely missed him. No. Let me in so I Sounds like he does not want to be doing this. He's just doing this for the check. Cause he's a famous actor, you know. So. They'll pay him a lot to do shit like that. Now, in another couple of years, playing punching bag to every swinging dick new to the network, that's going to have a psychological effect on how the audience perceives you. True. Over time, yeah. Who's going to kick the shit out of you next week? Mm, yeah, Mannix. See you as a week. How about Batman that's and Robin? The Adam West Batman? Do you go to Rome and star in West? And win fucking fights. Mm. Yeah, it's, I mean you don't want, you don't want to be known for just losing all the time in every movie and TV show. It's official, old buddy. Well, it has been. <laughs> what are you talking about? What did that guy tell you? Told me the goddamn truth is what he told me. Whoa, whoa! Wants <laughs> to help me get into Italian movies. Well, then what's the problem? I gotta do fucking Italian goddamn movies. That's a fucking problem. Come on. Going to Rome to star in movies does not sound like the fate worse than death that you seem to think it is. Come on, you ever seen a, 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 an Italian Western, huh? No, but I bet they're awful. Nobody likes spaghetti Westerns. Nah, that's not the move. That's not the move. You made Bounty Law. Nobody's gonna forgive me for that last season. I'm always gonna be the horse's ass that, that, that got Bounty Law canceled. Holy shit. <laughs> that, was a, that was Polanski. That was Roman Polanski. He's easy. Polanski's the hottest director in town right now, probably the world. Bro, you're his fucking neighbor. You can get a role in this shit. I could be one pool party away from starting a new Polanski movie. Yes. Feeling better now. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Sorry about oh, that. He feels my glasses back. <laughs> yeah, he feels way better now.
This movie is very aesthetically pleasing. Like, after watching a good amount of Quinn's movies and then watching his latest one, you can really see the evolution in his movies now. And, like, this this feels like 1969. Very believable. I feel like most movies that try and sell a date that old, it's like, eh... They don't show enough of the surroundings to make it feel like it, you know? What the fuck am I saying? How would I know what 1969 feels like? I wasn't, I wasn't alive. Look what I got for you. Okay, I know this is gonna be like a really weird comparison, but what this is reminding me of, like this feels like this would be a GTA storyline based in Hollywood 1969. Cause it's kind of how like we just switched off from Leo to Brad, it would switch off characters, you know? Phew. Bro, you gotta clean that bowl, dog. How it transitions from one character to the next. It's very smooth. Them driving in the car, that just feels that just feels like a GTA thing. Like the cutscenes, you know? Playboy Mansion. Then one of these days that Polish prick's gonna fuck things up, and when he does. So Jay's gonna be there. Sharon absolutely has a type. Cute, short, talented guys who look like 12 year old boys. <laughs> I never stood a chance. Neither would I. Neither would I. Sunday, February 9th, 1969. You know, the radio really helps to sell the year, for sure. And obviously just like the music choices, cars, the way everyone's dressed, the scenery and everything. Like I said earlier, it's very believable. If you got me covered up in all this, uh, <laughs> this junk. No one's gonna recognize him. How's the audience gonna know it's me? I hope they don't. Oh no, he wants the, no. I don't want them to see Jake Cahill. I want them to see Caleb. Yeah, but that's not good for Rick. <laughs> not a TV cowboy. You're better than that. I mean, yeah, like them, the audience seeing Caleb not seeing Rick Dalton, it's important for like the movie, you know? Cause like when you have too famous of an actor in a movie, it kind of takes you out of the movie. Like with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Honestly, I have yet to feel that with them in most things, but they're both good enough actors to where like you just forget who they are and, and like you're invested into the movie for their character and everything. So like with The Rock, like, no, I don't see him as anyone. I just see him as The Rock, dude. Like I can't, I can't get past that. Cause like The Rock plays like one type of character in every single movie. Wait, wait, you know what's funny? I remember I saw this one picture where it was like a picture of The Rock and it was like four different shots and he was in the same exact outfit and like same exact scene. And the cap the caption was just, these are four different movies. Cliff. It's like Kurt. So you still with Rick? Huh? Yeah, it's him. And I can't afford to hire a bunch of guys that smoke cigarettes and sit around talking to each other all day on the chance that I might use them. Hey, shout out to Rick for trying to get uh, Brad Pitt a job on this though. He's vouching for him. So you know they're boys. I don't dig him, and I don't dig the vibe he brings on a set. Oh, oh, oh beef between oh, two? Come yeah. on. What? Huh. The dude killed his fucking wife. What? You, you don't believe that old shit, do you? Yes, Rick, I do. And I work with my wife, and she believes it. She doesn't want his creepy ass around. They all said it. He's a fucking loser, and I didn't believe him. So I guess I'm the fucking idiot. Better kill his wife. <sighs> okay, you fucking horse's ass. <laughs> Let's get you over to wardrobe. Appreciate the opportunity, mm -hmm. Randy. I won't let you down. You know my wife, Janet, don't you? Yeah. Steer clear of her. <laughs> now, I admire Cassius Clay. Oh. I do. What I admire is, in his sport, there's an... Is that Bruce Lee? If you don't beat him, he kills you. That's beyond athletics. That's beyond wide world of sports, you know. That's two warriors engaged in combat. That's what I admire. In martial arts tournaments, they won't let you fight like that. It's very frustrating. It's trying to sound all stoic and shit. Just want to let him have it. Ah! <laughs> so you got to do this play acting patty cake version. They do what they need to do to win. But in martial arts tournaments, I do to win what they do to win. I kill people. Mm. Well, if you fought Cassius Clay, who would win? That would never happen. But if you did, what do you think would happen? I'd make him a quipple. <laughs> I'm Rick Dalton's stunt double. Stuntman? Yeah, Bruce is in the subtitle. Did I say something funny, stun man? Yeah, you kind of did. What's so funny? Look, man, I don't want each. Look, bro, are you really him? Are you really that guy? I mean, it's Bruce Lee, of course he is. 
Brad, Brad Pitt doesn't believe him. You're a little man with a big mouth and a big chip. And I think you should be embarrassed to suggest you be anything more than a stain on the seat of Cassius Clay's trunks. You're the one with the big mouth. And I would really enjoy closing it, especially in front of all my friends. My hands are registered as lethal weapons. <laughs> we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Okay, you go to jail regardless. He accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. Yeah. It's called manslaughter. Yes. And I think all that lethal weapon horse shit is just an excuse so you dancers never have yeah. to get in a real fight. That's not, that's not a real thing. How about a friendly contest? Two out of three. Who puts who on the ground first? Nobody tries to hurt nobody. Just who ends up on their butt. Okay. That's a great idea, Cato. Oh, he was running away again. <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs> Wait, that is not Glenn from The Walking Dead. What? You know, Bruce, that guy's kind of famous. That guy? Wait. For what? Dude, it sounds just like Glenn, but it doesn't really look like him. I mean, it's probably a haircut that's like makes him look way different. But I mean, the jawline doesn't look like him. Doesn't look like his either. Okay, why do I feel like Brad Pitt? Why do I feel like Brad Pitt is just about to beat his ass? Ooh. Okay. You know, Bruce Lee, he does have some fast ass kicks. Try that again. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, yeah, he just timed that perfectly. He knew exactly what he was going to do. <laughs> the second one. Oh, ooh. Ooh. Jackass, this is our series lead. Yeah, you can't be doing that to the lead. And I'm sorry about that. Don't fucking Janet me, you prick. Hey, what's up, babe? Oh, it's his wife. She already hates him. The asshole wife-killing buddy boy here was beating the shit out of Bruce. What? Hey, Randy. <laughs> Cliff. Oh hey. my God, what the fuck did you do to my car? Oh. Due to her car. I just tossed Bruce Lee into it. Get your shit and get fucked. And get off the lot. Damn. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. You just clown Bruce Lee. Why did Quinn have to do Bruce Lee like that? Was he like never that good? It's just like all urban legend. Like it's just gossip that Bruce Lee was raw when in reality he was like kind of mid. Is that what the movie's going for here? What's this shaggy asshole? Oh yeah, hey man, I'm looking for Terry. Really? He moves? Uh, you know, you know where? We'll just take the backpack. Thank you kindly. Charles. Said Charles in the subtitle. <laughs> Bro, don't do that to the set. You don't eat lunch? I've got a scene after lunch. Eating lunch before I do a scene makes me sluggish. It's the actor's job to strive for 100% effectiveness. Professional. When we're on set, I prefer to only be referred to by my character's name. <laughs> always just a tiny bit better when I don't break character. And if I can be a tiny bit better, I want to be. Mm, she wants that edge. She's more of a professional than he is. He's getting outclassed by a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> yes. well, what, what are you, 12? I'm eight. <laughs> well, he's, um, he's not the best anymore. In fact, far from it. That's why Rick Dalton's interested in it. He's coming to terms with what it's like to be slightly more Average. Use. Useless. Yeah. Slightly more useless. Each day. Yeah, he can relate to this book. Oh, he broke. No. Sounds like a really sad book. Poor Easy Brazy. I'm practically crying and I haven't even read it. <laughs> 15 years you'll be living it. What? <laughs> I don't like names. Like pumpkin puss? Yeah, why would you say that to her? Is this... Yeah, it's her. Okay, I was gonna say, is this her movie? That's why she's like admiring all the photos. 75 cents. What if I'm in the movie? Mm, yep. Well, that's me. The <laughs> girl from Valley of the Dolls. She lying? 
if you saw if you saw this movie in a movie theater wait is that actually joe namath who was in this movie i mean he totally could have been but anyway if you saw this movie once upon a time in hollywood in theaters you'd be watching a movie in theaters of somebody watching a movie in theaters wow by the daughters of american revolution I think that is Joe Namath, yeah. You know, I just know him because he's a football player, but... Won the Super Bowl for the Jets back in, uh, way back in the day. Ooh, <laughs> behind the back? That was smooth. You care to join me at my table where I entertain my guests? I'd be delighted, Monsieur de Cactu. Mm, is that a Jingo and Jane reference? Montour? I ain't gonna hurt her. I just want her to play the fiddle. What, what? Line? Go, oh. go fetch her and tell her what? No, he's doing so good. That was pretty impressive by Leo because that was all one shot. It's not like they cut around him saying all that. Like, no. He, when the movie, especially Quinn's movies, they hold one shot for, for a really long time and there's a really long conversation going line, on. Line, 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 line. Oh, I forgot it again. Line. But that's just what I'm thinking about. Like, dude, there's so much dialogue to memorize and to perform out here. Fuck this movie. Mm -hmm. oh, we just go back, please. Can we just cut? Can we just cut? Already has. Right. Maybe he already has. Ah, God damn it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Goddamn outlaw, Rick. Come on now. <clears throat> Ooh, I got it. Come on, Rick. Like, it's one thing to remember all the lines, but to not fuck up that performance, that's impressive. <laughs> God damn. No, dude, you were doing so good until, like, you forgot your line the third time. That's when you had a meltdown. Fucking lines, I'll practice them and I don't look like I goddamn practice. Drink too much, huh? Every fucking night, every fucking night. That's it. That's fucking it. Sober. Fucking it. You stop drinking right now. Mm -hmm. All right? Make a promise to yourself you're going to stop fucking drinking. <laughs> Dude, he's, ha he's having such a meltdown. You don't get these lines right. You're off. I'm gonna blow your fucking brains out tonight. I was gonna say your career was probably over, but. Well, I'll I'll take you there. Yeah, hitchhiking was probably something that was super common back in the day until serial killers started, you know, murdering people. So. Eight westerns at the ranch back in the old timey days. Want me to stuff your cock while driving? What? How old are you? What? Great question. Wow. First time anybody asked that in a long time. What's the answer? I need to see something official that verifies that you're 18, which you don't have because you're not. Not you. Yeah. What do you do? Ain't got me yet. Today it does. It won't be because of you. Mm-hmm. He's thinking about the right head right there. But that can all change like that. Okay, okay, okay. He's remembering his lines pretty well. Okay, he's doing a good job. You do know kidnapping is a hanging <laughs> So he's blowing the heads off little girls. <laughs> he's doing a great job. They can only hang me once. Mm. Right? <laughs> Puts $50,000 in my lap! Deliver my message. Dude, he's doing a really good job. I don't think he ever gave that kind of performance in Bounty Law. And cut! Perfect, great. That was amazing. He's gonna be so proud of himself. No, 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 no. I'm good. I got pads on. It's cute how he cares. That was the best acting I've ever seen in my whole life. Aww. That just, that just made his entire week. It meant so much to him. See, you're not washed. You're not washed. You just need to be rejuvenated a little bit. Rick fucking dope. Mm hmm. You need that spark back. He's back and better than ever. And thank you for giving our precious pussy a ride home. Think nothing of it. We love pussy. <laughs> I used to ride horses every day back in Tennessee. Is that right? Every day? <laughs> well, every week. <laughs> right. Wait, I know exactly what that girl is. I know exactly. That's love. Wait, that guy looks hella familiar too. You're both experienced riders, I guess. Uh, we'll just make Damn, that's awesome. We can fun. see her. The dude's Austin Butler. That's who, he, that's who that is. It's the last cop's jaw I ever broke, I can tell you that. <laughs> Man. Bad boy. The Hawaiian guy seems to be okay. Oh, that's Cassie from Euphoria. Oh, wow. Okay, we're getting a bunch of characters that, like, ever, that we've seen on the channel already. Damn. Yeah. 
Does he still live right there? So George gave you all permission to be here? Of course he did. And you all take care of him? No, we take care of George. We love George. Well, is there anything wrong with me saying hello to an old friend? You can't see him right now. Oh, so you guys don't care. You don't take care of him at all. All right. Because he's napping. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll go wake him up. This is his nap time. Oh, that's lovely. Well, I think I'll just go see for myself. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm getting midsummer vibes from all these girls. That's Amber. That's Amber from Scream. What? So many characters out of nowhere, too. Like, I feel like up until this point, I haven't we haven't seen like any characters we've really seen on the channel like that. <laughs> Bro, what? Right in it. Oh, this place is a shit show. Be back there. Go at the end of the hallway. You might have to shake him awake. I fucked his brains out this morning. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. I feel like he's an old man. Like, that's what I pictured in my head. It's just an old man. Oh, Mr. Eight Years Ago. <laughs> George is blind. So you'll probably have to tell him who you are. What's going on? Uh, everything's all right. Mm. Oh, that's the... Um... It's the old general dude from Hateful Eight. Yeah, how you doing? John Wilkes? Oh. No, Cliff Booth. John, no, not John Wilkes Booth. Who? Rick Dalton. <laughs> Dalton Brothers. No, Rick Dalton. Yeah, he doesn't remember anything. Would that be the little redhead out front? What the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> First you wake me up, and now you're pretending that I didn't tell you I was fucking blind! <laughs> but you touched me today. You came to visit me. Oh. You embarrassed me. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Just go fuck. George isn't blind! Oh. You're the blind one! Oh, I see. No pun intended. So leave me alone. Is it him? You do that? You know, that's not my car. Mm, it's Rick's. That's my boss's car. Fix it. Oh. <laughs> fuck you. Probably doesn't even know how. Yep. You're killing. Ladies. Ooh. Come one step closer and I will knock his teeth out. Can I at least get a rag to wipe my face first? Nope. Nope. <laughs> get on a horse, go get Tex, and get his ass down here. Ooh, who, who's Tex? The heavy. Tex is the heavy. That's who. That's who. Oh, it's Austin Butler. That's who Tex is. Tex! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything to Brad Pitt. It looks cool. It's a good shot. It looks good. Oh, he just it's laughed. It's five o'clock in Boston. She has missed him. My booze don't need nobody. Oh, oh. oh here yeah. I come. Oh, here there I it come. is. There's the shot. <laughs> oh, man, right in the face. Commentary. That was a smooth leap. Thank you. <laughs> Six months later. All right. I wonder how his career is going now. After oh, that nice Musso hairball. and Frank's lunch. Nice sideburns. <laughs> After that Musso and Frank's lunch meeting, Marvin did provide Rick job opportunities in the Italian film industry. Mm. All right, well, he did it. Quite nicely within Sergio Corbucci's rogues gallery okay. of anti-heroes. In Rome, Rick loved the paparazzi and the fuss they made over him and his... Looks like it was working out pretty well. <laughs> Cliff. <laughs> Way back in coach working on his bottomless bloody <sighs> poor cliff he kept rick company during his entire six month stay in italy dude that's a best friend as the two men return home they've come to an understanding what can they now be friends i just I, I can't afford you anymore cliff no we reached the end of the trail cliff damn it's kind of sad after nine years together would be rick and cliff's final rodeo let's make it a good one boys Looks like Zac Efron. <laughs> Wait, his wife looks like uh, Vanessa Hudgens. It looks like Zac Efron, Vanessa Hudgens. Throwback to High School Musical. <laughs> Taco Bell, wow. OG Taco Bell. Wiener schnitzel, wow. I've never had Wiener schnitzel. Never once thought to go and get it either. Ooh. 
You, a cigarette dipped in acid. Yep. What's that do? Six months ago. Is it even still good? Like, I don't know. I'm not familiar with acid, so I don't know. If... Mm, something's gonna go wrong now that he's smoking it. He's gonna be too impaired to deal with it. Is that Austin Butler and the hippies? Yeah, it is. Damn. He kind of looks like Bill Skarsgård, though. Yeah, they came looking for him. And dude, they walked, they drove right past him. <laughs> but what are they gonna do? What's your goddamn fucking hippie? <laughs> we just got lost and a little turned around. Oh. Mm. Those are, I'm gonna fucking kill you, Izzy, about him too. Oh no. Hell, are you looking at you little ginger haired fucker? Dude, okay, Rick is being hella mean though. Like, I mean, I get it, he's pissed. They're on a private road, they shouldn't be here and have a loud car at midnight, but like. Fucking hippies. But he's seen us. He's awake. He's alert. They're... Yeah. They're listening to fucking records. Mm. Everybody's fucking awake. Look. <laughs> fucking Robin, too? What? Go to Terry's old house and kill everybody in there. Are you calling me a liar? No, of course not. Why are Hawks only in this? Because Uma Thurman said no. Fuck you, Katie. Sorry, I don't know the name of every fascist on TV in the 50s. I can't believe When I was a kid, I had a Bounty Law lunchbox. That was my favorite of all my lunchboxes. Hmm. Never meet your heroes. When we've been having our trip sessions, I've been expanding on this one idea in my head. We all grew up watching TV, you know what I mean? If you grew up watching TV, that means you grew up watching murder. Oh no. So, my idea is murder the actors and actresses. Kill the people who taught us to kill. That's so stupid. I mean, where the fuck are we, man? We are in fucking Hollywood, man. Jesus. The people in a town. Wait a minute. Oh uh, shit. Sorry, I forgot my knife in the car. What? I locked the car. You'll need keys to get in. Watch her dip. Okay. Just hurry up. Yeah. Uh, just, just a little minute. Oh, she's gonna drive off, 100%. Yep, car starting, she's out of here. Yep! What do we do now? Well, we do what we came to do. <sighs> yeah, and then Brad Pitt's not gonna be able to deal with this because he just smoked this acid cigarette. Oh, <laughs> sound effects. The train has left the station. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's sleeping. It was like a and then Leo's in the back, just vibing with the headphones on, so you probably can't hear any of this. Uh, can I help you? <laughs> Does he even realize who they are? Probably not. Shit. <laughs> oh, I know you. Mm. I know all three of you. You are. I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Weird. No, I was dumber than that. <laughs> Rex. Yeah. I showed him Tex. Tex. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I got her. <laughs> oh. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this dog's so obedient. Very well trained. Can't. I can't do that to Nala. She's deaf. Oh. Damn, I got fucked up again. Just like in Scream 5. Or her name's Sadie in this, but you know what I mean. What? Oh, she got him. But he can't feel that shit. He can't feel that. Ooh. Ooh. Dude, Rick's gonna come inside and just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's just vibing outside in the pool right now. Ooh. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, he's grabbing a gun, huh? Oh, oh he's grabbing the flamethrower from the movie. <laughs> oh my god. Because you know he knows how to use it. Oh. This is a worse ending for her than it was for her in Scream 5. Dude, I would love it if Quentin did a Scream movie. That would be insane. <sighs> Guy hippie said he was the devil. <laughs> and he said, I'm here to do some <laughs> devil shit. <laughs> and away we go. Dude, Cliff is such a mood. I mean, he's an acid, but like, regardless. 
good friend, Cliff. Mm -hmm. I tried. <laughs> Would you like to come up to the house for a drink and meet my other friends? Sure. Yeah. Sure. This is music. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I enjoyed this movie. It was it was a fun watch. It was really entertaining. But is it my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? No. What I really liked about the movie, though, was the cinematography. That was amazing. The shots, the scenery, the overall aesthetic was really nice to see. It was very, very satisfying. I think my favorite parts of the movie were when they were just showing landscape shots of what's happening. That, that's probably my favorite part of the movie, to be honest. As far as like the story, I wouldn't say it's his most interesting story he's written. You know, it's about Rick Dalton, a struggling actor coming off the peak of his career he's struggling now then he got a stunt double slash like best friend in cliff you know in hollywood 1969 like it was a really good movie but in my opinion just maybe just not the most interesting story to tell but the way the movie was made amazing it was amazing but where would i rank this in the quentin tarantino movie verse this in the QTCU. I know in Reservoir Dogs, I kind of gave a list, but what it wasn't really a list. My my opinion has changed a bit. I've thought about it for some time now after Reservoir Dogs. So I now I would probably go Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight, Reservoir Dogs, Inglorious Bastards, Once Upon a Time, Django Unchained. That's probably how I would go now, to be honest. I just think all those movies I put above Once Upon a Time had a more interesting storyline to them. I just think Quentin's other characters are a little more interesting than Rick Dalton and Cliff, to be honest. Would I rewatch this movie? Yeah, I definitely would. I would definitely rewatch it. And I mean, if it sounds like I'm talking down on it, I'm definitely not trying to. I still thought it was an amazing movie. I'm just comparing, I'm just saying compared to the rest of Quentin's movies, that's personally where I would rank it. This movie is far and away better than most movies that are out today. So this felt more of like art than Quentin telling a story. And I just think Quentin has told more interesting storylines. Like I think the storyline in Kill Bill is more interesting. I think the storyline in Reservoir Dogs, Hateful Eight, Inglorious Bastards, Pulp Fiction, Bingo and Chain are a better storyline than this. But I would say this is probably his best movie in terms of aesthetics and cinematography. But in my opinion, the storyline is the most important thing. And it was a good story, but I just think he has more interesting stories in his other movies. Yeah, and the, the transitions though between characters in this movie, that was clean, it was so clean. It was so good. I would say in that regard, it's my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. Just the way the movie was made, just the cinematography of the movie, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I would definitely say in that regard, this is my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. But even though this isn't my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie overall, I'm sure it's still a great movie. It's still a phenomenal movie. I feel like this movie was meant for more rewatchability than it was first watch. I feel like there's a lot of things in this movie that you don't get your first watch because it's your first time watching. You have no context. But then as you rewatch it, you're like, you're literally that meme of Leo like, oh, but yeah, that was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Comment down below what you thought about this movie down below in the comments. And if you like the video, like the video and thanks for watching